Okay, welcome everybody, welcome back. Today, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a mishmash of different things we're going to learn. And so the first thing that I wanted to cover is events. So if we come here to the main page of FLTK, uh, the documentation page, and right here it says handling events. I'd like you to read through this. And uh, it's really important to kind of go through this slowly. I'm not going to do that with you here. But what I am going to show you is first we're going to deal with mouse events. And if you remember, we had a program uh, in an earlier lesson where we created a window like this. And we were able to click on things and display a number and change the color. but there are many situations, like particularly I'm thinking of games, where you want to be able to not only left click like this, but you also want to be able to right click. Now if I, I'm right clicking right now, you can't see that, but I am. And nothing, there's no different behavior that's happening. And so that's one of the first things that I'd like to just kind of explain and show how to do. So if we go back to the documentation, here it says that FL event button. So this event button has to do with the type of event that occurred for the mouse. Now the callback that we wrote in that code that you just looked at, okay, so if we open it up, it's not particular. There is, only, there is only one callback here, and the function name of that callback is butcb. And there it is. So now, let's go back to the documentation and take a look at the, what this event button holds in store for us. If we click on it, it's actually going to take us to, notice that it was FL colon colon. So that means it's part of the FL class. Now, it, we can actually get there in a different way. So if we go class index, and if we go down to F, it's here. That was all the FL classes. Remember I said that was an important one. And if we, go, if we scroll down to uh, E for event button, and there it is, right there. Notice we're at the same place. It's the same uh, documentation here. So what this look at it says gets wh which particular mouse button caused the current event. Now here are the values, left, middle, and right. Okay. Now if you have if you if you have a mouse with a a scroll wheel in the middle. Oftentimes, you can actually uh, use push the scroll wheel down for the middle mouse button. So, what I'd like to do right now is let's go back to our code and let's let's save it as a different. Let's save it as let's say callback um, three. And let's go ahead and edit this file such that I want things to turn a different color based on which button I click. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say if, and it was event button, if event, so the code is right here right if event now the thing here is this is an FL so I'm gonna have to go uh, FL event button okay and let me go back to my code and it's going to return some value now I can say if that's equal to FL and if I if you if I remember if I not remember but if I show you the options here right 
So left mouse, well, that's, that's kind of like default. Let's just change the right mouse behavior. So FL right mouse. Now I can say, well, change the width color to, let's say, FL red. Okay. By the way, once again, we don't need to redraw the widget because it gets redrawn when we click on it. So if it was any other widget that we did not click on, we'd have to end up calling dot redraw on that widget. Okay. And now, um, I could have, for example, now listen, the, the question is, is this going to work? Right? So if you look at the logic here, uh, notice line 8, though. So, I mean, I, th I think you're, pr I'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen here. And so let's run it. And if I left click, it goes green. And if I right click, it still goes green. Obviously, this logic isn't proper because line 8 is going to be executed regardless of what this if statement does. So therefore, we need to still edit. We need to say elif. Now listen, we could, um, now that's fine. We could say fl.event button here, oops, equals fl left, this is all uppercase, and then we could simply go uh, gr uh, green. Now if we run it, now I left click and now I right click. And so it's working exactly as I intended here, left, right. Okay, so in this way, you can you can decide what to do based on which mouse button was clicked inside the callback. You don't need separate callbacks. You simply need uh, an if statement inside your callback to decide which button was clicked. Okay. Um, now there is. There is another uh, thing I'm going to show you later. Okay, so the next uh, topic we're going to go over is creating shortcuts for widgets and also creating shortcuts through the label of a widget. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a previous code that we've already written, which was this one where we brought up the image of the cat. And we're going to put a button down here. And uh, we're going to click that button to make the image of the cat appear. So let's go ahead and I've just made a copy of that program. So let's go ahead and modify it now. And the first thing I want to do is I'd like to make a function here and I'm going to call it uh, butt callback. And of course I'm going to pass a widget to it, which in this case is going to be the button. Now in order for that to happen, uh, I'm going to take these two lines, okay? And, um, well, actually, let's take, uh, let's take a few different things here. So how about we'll take, um, let's, let's make it this easy just to show you what this is all about. Let's just take this line. Oops. And let's, pl let's place it up here. Oh, I'm having trouble with Vim. 
Okay, I'm really having trouble with them. Maybe I shouldn't be using this. Um, so, now this is, is this, first of all, we have to make, let's make the button, but um, that's not the button that I really wanted to have. So let's change, let's change the, uh, this thing from bot to, uh, let's change it to box, and let's make this an FL box. In other words, I can't click on it. And then, uh, the callback, though, for this thing is, yeah, I don't have a button. So I think we're going to have to make a button. So let's go but equals FL button. And let's make the button start at uh, x being 0 and y being 300. And uh, oh, no, actually, let's make it start at uh, width and height. So let's make it start at butt height. And let's make it, let's say, uh, 40 x, y, width, and height. Wait a minute. That's not right. OK, sorry. I, got, I was having a little bit of difficulty with my editor. Uh, so I've kind of cleaned things up a little bit. I moved the pick resize up to line 12. And I've made a box, and I've made a button. And if I run this, OK, I've, uh, yeah. So yeah, I can't move this up here because uh, the box doesn't exist yet. So we got to take this back down to here again. Um, in fact, probably a better thing to do maybe would be simply to put that in the callback. But that's OK. I'll just leave it there because there's no other, there's no other uh, thing to put things on. So let me run this one more time. And there it is. That's what I want right now. Uh, however, what I'm, what I need to do is I'd like the image to appear when I click on the button. So therefore, I need to make a but dot callback here, and I'm going to call that callback but cb. And so now this this function is going to get executed when I click on the button. And that is basically going to put the image on the box. Let's see if it works. So now let's click here, view image. And it's putting it on the wrong box. I wanted to put it on the, uh, not on the button, but on the box. So let's go box.image pick. Let's try it again. And nothing's happening. And the question is, why is nothing happening? And the reason is because, think about this. When I run this right now, so if I run it, what's getting redrawn? When I click on the button, the button's getting redrawn. But I'm not actually putting the image on the button. I've put it up here in the box. So if I minimize this and I maximize it, lo and behold, like magic, the image ends up being on the box. And the reason of, for that is because when I minimize and maximize, the window manager, or in this case you could consider that to be the operating system, is redrawing the entire window. And then the image appears. So in order to fix this, the only one when I the only widget that ends up getting redrawn is the one that I'm clicking on, which is the button. But that's not the one that I want redrawn. I want box to be redrawn, so I have to call box dot redraw. So now, if I run it and I click on view image, 
yay, it shows up without having to minimize and maximize. So at this point, now I can show you what I wanted to show you, and that is, first of all, let's do the ampersand uh, feature of the label. So if I put an ampersand before the V, okay, then I'm, I, yeah, let's, let's put an ampersand here. Oops. And now let's run it again. So notice that's all I did is just put one character before the V and I'll run it. And now if you'll notice, there is an underline under the V. So if I go Alt V, it's as if I pressed the button. I didn't actually press it. So I'll, I'll try, I'll show you again without having my mouse there. So if I now, my mouse, now you can see where my mouse is, it's not on the button. If I go Alt V with my keyboard, it's as if I pressed the button. Now you can have the, it doesn't have to be the first character either. You can have the ampersand anywhere you want. You can have it before the I. And in this case, uh, if, I, if I run it, notice now the, uh, the I is underlined. Now if I go Alt-I, it works as well. So this is kind of like having a shortcut with the Alt button. However, you might decide that you don't want to use the Alt button. You want the shortcut to be more direct without having to press an Alt button. And the way to do that is simply to say but.shortcut. And then you have to specify the key. So let's go back to our documentation and let's take a look at shortcut. OK, so this is. Uh, index list, this is a button. Let's go take a look if button has shortcut. There it is. So if we click on shortcut, this returns the shortcut. And then this here sets the shortcut. OK? OK, so here I have created the shortcut. And that now I can specify a character. Let's say, for example, uh, I can specify a character like a V. And now I can uh, simply run this. And now I don't have to hit Alt. I'm not sure if you, know, you can't see my keyboard at this point, but I'm just going to, you have to trust me, I'm not hitting Alt I, I'm just hitting the letter V and it works. And so I want to show you though where these um, shortcut values are located. And they're in enumeration. So if you go to the main page and you go down to enumerations, uh, here are the here are some of the events. And here's th those what we'll, we'll, we'll kind of we, we can't, we just have to stay focused here. But here they are, right here. So uh, event key values. So here they are. So let's say, for example, if you wanted something with tab, it'd be FL tab. Um, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Now this one is the keypad. And this one's the function key. Just one point of note, in the new documentation they've changed this. Uh, when it says plus n, this for um, Python is a little different. Here it's, it's OK because these are all in order along the function keys along the top. So in other words, if I want to press F1, F2, I would just go FL underscore F plus 1 as an integer. But these ones in Python are a little different because in this case, and, the, and like I said, this documentation isn't correct because it's been updated in the 1.4 documentation. But um, 
this has to be the ordinal of the character. So for example, if I wanted to use, let's say, the number 5 on the keypad, then I would have to go like this. Let's say I would go uh, fl underscore keypad plus ordinal of 5. And the reason for that, by the way, is and, that, and that's only for the keypad ones. So let me just kind of run this and I'll show you what I mean. So now if I hit the 5 on the keypad, uh, it should work. And it's not. Okay, so uh, guess what's happened? This isn't working for me. First of all, uh, I have to show you why it's not working for me, and that's because I have a non-standard keyboard with extra buttons along the top, and those are causing my keypad buttons to be offset. And so we've tried it with a regular standard keyboard, and this indeed does work. However, um, the question is, why do I have to go ORD? So the ordinal number. And the reason is because this has actually been updated in the new documentation, as I've mentioned. But for the keypad, the keys are actually not in order. And in the correct documentation, in, in the newer one, says that you have to add the, the char, which is in single quotes. Now, if you add a, a, a character in single quotes, Single quotes and double quotes in Python are both a string. But in C++, double quotes is a string, and a single quote is a char, a character. And that is interpreted as an integer when you add it. Therefore, in Python, the way to convert a single character into a, an integer, the ASCII value of it, is to use ORD. And in fact, I have tested this, and it does work. But it does work on a standard keyboard, not on one like mine where it's wacky and things are out of order. So in any case, I kind of gave an explanation as to why that works and how it works. Now, um, the more important one, actually, that I wanted to show you was how do, would you make a shortcut based on the arrow keys, the left and right? And if we go back to the documentation, that's important because we're actually going to be doing uh, an application later to do that. And it's right here at the FL right arrow and, of course, the FL left arrow. Let's try that. So let me come here and let me go. Um, FL right. And so now. If I run this, uh, oops. OK, I uh, got that wrong. It's not capitalized there. And now let's try it. And it works. Yay, OK. So once again, just to prove everything is uh, OK, you can see my keyboard, and I'm going to press that button, and it works. So uh, that's cool. So we can now essentially do shortcuts through specifying the key here on line 21, and also by putting an ampersand uh, in the label for any letter that we want. But we have to use the Alt button for that. Okay, so the next demo we're going to do is I'm going to show you a new widget. It's called FL Input, and um, it's under I, and there it is. So our FL Input, we're going to create it like this, x, y, width, and height again, and the label. So let's go ahead and make that and let's see what an FL input is. 
So in order to do this, I'm actually going to also pack an FL output. So, because I should show you an output and an input together at the same time. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make a pack. And I'll call my pack P. And we'll go FL pack. And we'll make the pack start at the top left hand corner of our window. And we'll make it the same height, width, and height of the window. So go ahead and follow along with me with the code here. Right? And then we're going to go p.begin here. So we're going to add things inside the pack. And then we're going to, um, here we're going to say uh, p.end. And we're going to add three things. And also, we're going to make this pack, uh, not here, after the pack is created here, I'm going to make this uh, type, I'm going to make it FL vertical. Remember from last day, if I make a vertical pack type now, I only need to specify the uh, height. So now I'm going to say uh, my input, and I'll I'll make this imp, and I'll call it an fl input, and I'm not going to specify x, y, width. But I am going to specify height. And I'm going to make the height, uh, let's say, 80. OK? And now I'm going to make an output. And I'm just going to do the same thing there. And I'm going to make that 80 as well. And then I'm going to make a button. And I'm going to do the same thing for that as well. OK. So essentially, now, if I, if I run this, OK, let's see what it looks like. There they are. Now, in this case, here's my button, here's my input, and I can type in it, and here is my output, and I cannot type in it. Notice, however, that the font on the input uh, seems a little bit small. Let's make that bigger. OK, so I want to actually make the, the, fo the font, or not, yeah, the font of what's inside the, the FL input bigger. But if you'll notice here, remember, here, I'm not trying to make the label bigger. I'm trying to make the text inside the input bigger. So if, if you come here and look under input, there's nothing. So if I go up one, it inherits from this class. So if I click on this class now, and I check FL input underscore, um, and I look for something about the text size, and there it is. So this one gets the text size, and this one sets the text size. And so if I go back to my code, that's what I've done here on line 9. I've just simply said, the input text size 24. And now when I run it, it's much bigger. OK? I can do that also. Because both output and input uh, are inherited, I can do that also to this one as well. I can out.text size. Although I can't type into an output, I would like that one to be bigger as well. Um, now, regarding the label, if I once again, if I run this, 
Uh, I don't really have space for a label here because I don't have space below or above and I don't want to definitely put it inside for this guy. So I'm just going to leave the labels off for this guy. Uh, but for the button, I would like the button to have a label and I'd like it to be on the button. And so uh, maybe we can put that right here and we can say convert uh, how about C to F, convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, so, or we could do it the other way around, doesn't matter. But if I now run this, uh oh, oh right, I forgot my end quote. Okay, so there's my button. Doesn't do anything, but now I can type in here. And I can type in, let's say, uh, you know, 40 degrees Celsius. What is that in, in Fahrenheit? So at this point, uh, I'd like to be able to click this and see the result in my output box. So I'd like you to see if you could write the callback for the button. So you go bot dot callback, and let's call it uh, bot underscore cb again, and let's come up here and say def bot underscore cb, and of course because it's a callback, it's going to be accepting a widget, which in this case is the button. But I'd like you to figure out what goes in that function such that if you type in a Celsius value into the input box, then the result will appear with the correct uh, number in Fahrenheit in the output box. Pause the video now, go ahead and try it. Okay, so here is the solution. First line of the function, a callback function, is uh, I'm calling the input dot value, and if we go to the documentation, we'll see that FL input does not have value, but the base class, which is FL input underscore, right? Look at how many different types of different input uh, subclasses there are here, which is kind of neat to see. You can click on any of those to see more specific information about them, but here. Let's see if we have a dot value, and we do. It's right there. And if we click on it, we'll notice that uh, this one here is the get. It has no arguments here, and it's returning a const char star, which is a string. And so if we go back to our code, uh, that's we're going to return the string text inside the input. And we're going to change that to an integer. And then we're going to multiply that by 9 fifths. And we're going to add 32 to change it to a Fahrenheit. And then we're going to change that Fahrenheit value back into a string. And then we're going to set that to the value. Now notice this is a, this is a set because there is something inside the value. And by the way, an output box and an input box are very similar. It's just the difference is that the output box, you can't physically type into it, but you can set the value. So if I run this now, and I type in 40, and I, and I click Convert, now I know that that's going to be 40. Uh, 40 Celsius is equal to 104 Fahrenheit. OK? Notice that I cannot type into this output box here. If I try hitting the keys, nothing's happening. But I can change the input box and click Convert. Um, so the output, and if I run it again, you'll notice I can't type anything into the uh, output box originally, even though I'm typing here, nothing's going to go in there. 
And so if I say 0 degrees Celsius, well, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. OK, so the other thing that I wanted to show you is sometimes you might want to have input in a different way. You might not want uh, to have an FL input where it's actually a widget that's on the window, but you'd rather have, let's say, for example, a pop-up. And you want to type something into a pop-up. So I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to comment these lines out. And actually, how about let's just comment this first line out. That's probably better. And oops. And so what I'm going to do now is instead of getting the Celsius from uh, the input like that, I'm going to create a pop-up box. And I'm going to say Celsius is equal to the int of fl underscore input. And then I'm going to say here, uh, enter Celsius. OK. And let's see what that looks like now. I think I need another uh, close bracket there for the int. OK. Now if I click here, it brings up a pop-up box. And I can type in a value. And notice this is has the uh, return symbol here. So that OK button, I can actually hit just Enter on the keyboard. And, and in fact, it works. So that's kind of neat. Now, where is that in the documentation? Let me show you. If I go to Modules, and I go to Common Dialogues and Classes and Functions, here I can go FL Input, and there, there it is, right there. OK? And so I was putting in a string there, and uh, it says, can be used to print a message out, and then get some input. And you know, this is a pop-up box. And notice it's not a widget, because it's lowercase and it's a function. So this provides a, a, an alternative to what we did before. OK, before I forget, there is one other uh, aspect of the pack I wanted to show you here, and that is, what if I want a little bit of space in between the widgets that I'm packing? So here I could say p dot spacing, and now I could say 20 here. And so if I run this, now you'll notice when I run it, there's some there's 20 pixels in between each uh, widget that gets packed vertically. Okay, so the the next thing that I wanted to show you today is a part of FLTK that allows you to get the name of a directory. And this is a built-in function again. And it's here under, uh, again, modules. And if I go to common dialogues and functions, and the one I'm looking for is called FL Directory Chooser. And it's that one, Dir Chooser. And so uh, here are the arguments that it will accept. The first two are strings. And the, the last one is whether or not you want a relative path or an absolute one. So uh, let's try it, OK? And so 0 for absolute path, and, and I guess it's uh, 1 for relative or anything else. OK, so let's try it out. Now, I'm actually going to try this just with an interpreter. And uh, I'm going to go import, oh, well, I can go from fltk import star. And now I'm going to say, uh, let's say d equals fl dir chooser. 
and I'm now going to say um, I'll say uh, pick a directory here so I'll go pick a directory and I'll I'm also gonna second one is the type of files you're gonna look for I'm just gonna say start out star and I'll leave the third one off I think it's optional and when I run it you can see that this line of code produces this so now if I click slot machine and I click OK notice here that's a directory it's only going to show me directories this is not gonna this is not a file chooser it's a directory chooser so it's not going to show me what's in those directories but it's just going to let me choose the directory itself now when I click OK here I've picked slot machine obviously this isn't going to disappear because I'm in, I'm in the interpreter here but nonetheless in a regular program after clicking OK it would disappear but let's just see what's in D now and the D is the directory and it actually returns it and so in this way this can be useful because of the next assignment which I'm going to give you there's one other thing which you'll need to do and that is uh, this is not a part of FLTK but I'm going to show you how to use it anyways here you're going to go import OS as well and so now if I go uh, OS dot list dir and now I provide it with a directory and I'm gonna provide it with D then it shows me exactly what is in what are the files in that directory and it puts them all in as strings inside a list and so in this way this is kind of a cool um, pieces of the puzzle for the ne your next assignment and that is going to be an image viewer so you've learned how to at least put images uh, in windows or in, in on boxes and things and whatnot but what I'm gonna ask you to do for a, a little assignment is I'm gonna get you to make an application that looks like this and I'd like there to be a border here and a border here or a portion of this and I'd like these two these I'd like this portion here to be uh, this to be buttons and in the middle so so these are buttons that you can click and also interestingly I'd like you to uh, go back to the documentation and let me show you uh, the the label that I'd like you to put on this so if I go to the main page and I show you labels and label types notice here uh, these two you can actually put the label at so as a string and you can get this to appear and so this is really nice because I'm going to use this is going to be the right hand and this is going to be the left hand. I'd like you to make shortcuts for these two buttons which are going to be the vertical buttons on the sides of the image. So the shortcut for this one I'd like it to be the right hand arrow key and the shortcut for this one I'd like it to be the left hand arrow key. I think you know where I'm going with this. So now it's going to look like this. There's going to be the arrow here and there's going to be the arrow here so that goes left this goes right and in here is going to be your images and so what's going to happen when you start up the application it's going to uh, ask you for or actually let's see should it ask you for the directory when you start it up um, perhaps I think maybe a better way to do this no you know what I changed my mind uh, I think it's okay let's just stick with one directory so essentially uh, when we open up 
the dot the the program and we create the window and on the left hand side and on the right hand side you're gonna have your left and right buttons and this is where the image is going to be located but what's gonna happen is when your program starts you'll have the pop-up to choose your di directory your dir chooser and then you will pick a directory you want and click OK and when you do then you will have you using os.lister you can get all the image names in that directory and by the way let's just stick to uh, PNG or JPEG JPG and by the way JPEG could be like this too okay now essentially the first image in that will appear here on the screen and then when you click this right you'll go to the next one if you click left you'll go to the back one and also if you uh, do right arrow it'll be the same as clicking this and if you do left arrow it'll be the same as clicking this and you can basically cycle through the images however I want there to be uh, some added functionality in that I want the width of your application to always stay the same okay so let's make the width say uh, well how about 800 that sounds about that sounds about okay and the the height on the other hand that should change based on the aspect ratio of the image okay so uh, well you know actually let's make the 800 um, how about let's make let's yeah let's make it 800 but that means that if this one is 50 and this thing is 50 then then the image is going to be uh, 700 pixels okay because the 800 goes from from this side to that side now the one thing which you might not know how to do in this case in this specific case is uh, how do you resize the window so let's go and take a look at that okay so here we are at the documentation for FL window and if we come over here to the left hand side and we scroll down alphabetically resize is right there and so changes the size and the position of the window so we can resize the window whenever we put a new uh, image up but of course keeping the width the same but changing the height such that the aspect ratio uh, of the image will be correct and once again I refer you to go back to the code that we've done previously in order to be able to solve this properly okay so good luck and we'll have the solution for you next time